This is Optimal Finance Daily, episode 833, Utility on Investment, by Tynan of Tynan.com. And I am Dan, I'm your host here on the show where I read to you from some of the best personal finance blogs on the planet. And if you have any topic requests for us or maybe an author that you like, who you'd like us to reach out to and see if we can get their content, come share those ideas with us at oldpodcast.com. That's O-L-D podcast.com. And before we get to today's post, thank you to Fundrise for their support. Fundrise enables you to instantly access high-quality, high-potential private market real estate projects, from high-rises in D.C. to multifamily apartments in L.A. And each real estate project is carefully vetted and actively managed by Fundrise's team of real estate pros. Fundrise is the future of real estate investing. So visit fundrise.com slash OFD, that's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash OFD to have your first three months of fees waived. For now, let's get right to our post as we start optimizing your life. Utility on Investment by Tynan of Tynan.com The thing about investing money is that it's pretty hard for an individual to do much better than 5 to 15% per year consistently, depending on your risk tolerance and connections. My best investments have been putting money to work with friends' businesses. 5 to 15% is pretty good, but it's inside the box thinking to stop there. What else can we do with our money? As a disclaimer, I have a good portion of my money in investments that make a return like that. It's good to grow your cash, and I'm not saying you shouldn't, but what if you diversify your portfolio beyond earning a financial return? After all, the point of money is utility, so why aren't we thinking one step further and thinking about how we can earn the most utility on money? I love to find situations where my capital is preserved, grows a little, or is consumed very slowly, but which yields me a lot of utility as a result. For example, I bought my RV for $18,000, plus probably $15,000 over its life in repairs, and maybe another $6,000 in improvements. I sold it last week for $30,000, so I lost $9,000 over the years I owned it. That's not a great investment, especially when you count the parking fees I paid for four or five years, until you think about the utility. For that small loss, I had a worry-free place to live in San Francisco. I bought myself the ability to have fixed living costs indefinitely, the freedom from having a landlord, and a really cool experience. There are all sorts of professionals who are competing for every last dollar of return on investment. I probably couldn't buy and sell vehicles and expect to make a huge profit because there are plenty of other people doing the same thing and they're better at it than I am. But no one is competing on the utility side, so my returns can be much higher. If you estimate I saved $1,500 a month in rent, which is probably conservative, I saved $144,000 in rent over eight years. That means my net profit was around eleven k per year. That's almost a 30% non-compounding return consistently over eight years. The RV is a really obvious example because it saved me actual money. Art is a more abstract example. I love buying art. I don't have a ton of it, but every piece I have is something that I would go out of my way to see in art museums. I buy my art very slowly and carefully and would estimate that if I liquidated my small collection patiently, I could probably get twice what I spent. It's hard to put a numeric value on having a little art collection, but to me, it's well worth it even if I can never sell it at a profit. I love seeing great art throughout my day, and I like being able to share the stories behind different pieces with my guests. When I first moved to Vegas, I bought a 1995 Mercedes C-Class for $2,500. It idles a little bit rough, the hood has a small wrinkle in it from where it must have been in some fender bender, and the driver's side door doesn't lock automatically with the rest of the doors. But it gets 35 miles a gallon, has a nice wood and leather interior, and is one of the most reliable Mercedes built. The utility I get out of that car is far greater than I could get in pure returns on $2,500. Plus, I sold half of it to my friend, which halved my cost, but maybe only decreased utility by 10 to 20%. I think most people would have bought, financed, or leased a car that cost 10 to $20,000. Same utility, much higher price. Because all I ever think about, at least for big purchases, is utility on investment, my life is full of these sorts of things. The condo in Vegas, the island, the place in Budapest, watches, home improvement projects, clothing, etc. The end result of all of this is that a large portion of my discretionary spending goes to things that will both make my life cheaper and better in the future. I'll never have to pay rent or a mortgage again if I don't want to, 
nor would I have to pay for an Airbnb or hotel if I just go to the island and Budapest. I'll never have to buy a watch again. I get mental stimulation every day from looking at my art. I have my own little tea room in my place in Vegas so that I can host people for free. In the same way that debt compounds to make life miserable, investing in utility compounds in the other direction. Every year I have fewer and fewer mandatory expenses, so I can use more of my money to invest further in utility and or to invest for a return which can perpetually fund my extremely low living costs. I have a lifestyle that is really exciting and satisfying to me and it costs me under $1,000 per month, a large portion of which is my private chef, aka Chipotle. Whenever you're about to spend a lot of money on something, really dig deep and ask yourself what sort of utility you're getting from it. What's the real utility on that leased BMW? Is there a smaller amount of money you could spend to get the same or similar utility? Is the utility you're gaining actually useful to you? Remember that if you save money in one area, you can deploy it somewhere else to get more utility. Don't allow yourself to spend large amounts of money on something that isn't going to bring you a lot of utility. And when you're thinking about investing money, think beyond pure financial returns. How could you invest money that would lower your cost of living for years to come? How could you spend it to permanently make your life better? What resource could you buy that would create experiences for you and your friends? This is one of those concepts that just seems so obvious to me, and yet I see very few people doing it. Most people's expenses increase all the time, as if it's some law of nature that this is how life has to be. But with good capital allocation, you can continually increase your quality of life and lower your costs. That's how you buy freedom in a way. You just listened to the post titled Utility on Investment by Tynan of Tynan.com. And thank you again to Fundrise for their support. Come by Fundrise.com slash OFD to have your first three months free. It's a tool mentioned across many of the blogs that I narrate here and for good reason. Private market real estate has historically provided excellent ongoing cash flow even as it supports long-term growth. Private market assets like these are a strategy for diversifying beyond public market investments and even other kinds of real estate, like publicly traded REITs. And Fundrise is the future of real estate investing. The platform's innovations power an investor-first model by eliminating the bloated costs and middlemen that have traditionally weighed down real estate investing, which saves investors time and money. Unparalleled transparency and real-time reporting let you see how the development of specific properties impact your overall portfolio. So check it out. Visit fundrise.com slash OFD. That's F-U-N-D-R-I-S-E dot com slash OFD to have your first three months of fees waived. And that's it for today. Thank you so much for listening. Have a great rest of your day. And I'm gonna see you back here tomorrow for the Thursday show where your optimal life awaits.